uh, getting to talk to him a little bit did nothing to dispel how much I'm rooting for that kid. No, he's impressive. He certainly, certainly is. A lot of impressive folks here at Big 12 Media Days. We are at Jerry World. It is day one. Uh, we talked about it. Uh, Baylor started off the day. Uh, Kansas, West Virginia, Kansas State, and Oklahoma State. And speaking of those Mountaineers, the head coach, Neil Brown, nice enough to join us. How are you, Coach? I'm doing well. Appreciate you guys having me on. You enjoying My this? pleasure, Coach. Enjoying this Media Day in 2022? Hey, it's, uh, it's better than alternative right than not being here so it's 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 good now the big 12 does a great job with this you know the venue is it's impressive to me you know i was in globe life last night watching the rangers we took our guys to the rangers game and and the thing about this is played here i think for the first time in maybe 2011 is how well maintained this facility is and if you walked in not knowing any difference you wouldn't know that it was going on however many years yeah, it was 08 yeah when it it's, it's just really yeah. it's really impressive and like I said, Big 12 does a great job with this. It's, this is a fun event, and it's something our student athletes that we're fortunate enough to bring, they'll never forget. Yep. Oh, I see it on the faces of players every year yep. when they walk in, yeah, and yeah. they're looking sharp, and they're in the suits, and I'm <laughs> thinking, now they're the stars, but this place always gets them. Yeah, you're exactly every right. Every time. Yeah, it's fun. You know, people like to our, – our guys, man, they get to dress up in the suits. They see the bright lights. They get to see some of the behind-the-scenes stuff, and it's uh, – it's stuff that they don't see on an everyday basis. And, it, and to me, as being a young person, being able to do something unique, something different, hey, it makes it all worthwhile. Neil, you've obviously been on a lot of football fields in your life. Is there any one field that sticks out in your mind the first time you set foot on that field? Like this place uh, has done for me several times in the past, including this year. It gave you that childlike wonderment and uh, just being glad that you're associated with the sport of football. Yeah, you know, I think that I'm from a small town in central Kentucky and I was fortunate enough to play at the University of Kentucky in the SEC. And I can remember – you know, we played a 9-15 um, game in, uh, down at LSU when I was a true freshman. And walking in there in a night atmosphere, you're like, hey, there's a little bit of wow factor to that. You know, we went – when I was offense coordinator at Texas Tech, we went to Norman and, and beat them when they were number one in the country. And, and walking into that in a night atmosphere, you're like, hey. You know, and, and I'll tell you this, you know, the first time I was able to, to be the head coach of West Virginia walking out, we played James Madison my first year in 2019 in Morgantown and seeing – the passionate fans that we have, that was a wild moment too. But we're just fortunate. I, 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 that's something I try to talk to our players about on a continual basis is, man, you know, there's a lot of things wrong with college football, but on game day there's a lot of things that are right. No doubt. Talking with West Virginia head coach Neil Brown, and uh, you made a Texas Tech reference, so let's go ahead and get that Graham Harrell question uh, out because your, off your offense is one that I know people respect in this conference. Now you're adding a name like that to the discussion. Talk about the decision process to end up with, uh, with Graham as your new OC. Well, we, we needed to change it up. We, I'd been calling the plays and, and running the offense. And to be honest, the world of college football has changed so much. Um, and, I, and I did that the previous seven years as a head coach. And you know, with name, image, likeness, and, and managing relationships because of the portal now, that's the job has become much bigger maybe than it than it ever has been. And I just didn't feel like that I was doing it due diligence from a coordinator standpoint, giving our giving our staff an opportunity to get the players the most prepared that they need to be. And uh, our plays were good. I just thought that that our preparation needed to be better. And so, uh, bringing in Graham, fresh perspective. Uh, we believe in the same thing from a schematic standpoint. But it's a, it's a fresh perspective. He's got great energy. He's had success both as a player and as a play caller. And he's got a really good feel for in-game adjustments. So he's, he's going to make us better. Was Graham responsible for uh, bringing the idea of having JT Daniels come in as a transfer? And uh, if so, what was your initial response to that? And how quickly did things play out to where you actually landed him as your potential next starting quarterback? Well, we went through the process there kind of in, bet uh, in between the bowl game and the start of our semester if we wanted to bring in a transfer. And we made the decision not. We've got three young quarterbacks in our program that, that we believe in. That we think that, that all three of them, Garrett Green's going to be a sophomore, Will Crowder's a redshirt freshman, and then Nico Marchio is a, is a true freshman. And we wanted to have give those guys an opportunity to, to really progress through spring practice. We wanted to add a veteran presence. Um, JT was available. Uh, Graham had the relationship with JT. And so it was a process that probably, you know, it went over, you know, six weeks to two months. Uh, he's able to come visit in April. Felt like this was the best opportunity to really um, to restart his career. And, and that's what – it's an opportunity for him, you know, to, to show and remind people the, the skill set and the talent that he has. It's an opportunity for us to put a veteran presence in that room. Coach, pardon me, a nerdy media kind of question, but why not bring him to Media Day? Well, because I think that Media Day is about earning that opportunity. And, 
And so a big piece of a transfer is really ingratiating yourself into the team, okay? And one thing that I've been really proud of, of JT is he's been intentional about building relationships. He's done a good job of not being at the forefront of everything we're doing. And so the four guys we brought here are Dante Stills, who we think is one of the top, if not the best, returning defensive linemen. He's going into his fifth year in our, our program. He's a multiple-year all-conference player. Charles Woods was our best cover guy last year. I think he's PFF, top defensive back. He's first-team preseason all-conference guy. He's definitely uh, ready to do that. Zach Frazier is an All-American candidate. He was second-team All-American uh, Walter Camp last year. He's made, I think, three preseason All-American teams so far. He's the leader of our football team. There's no question. And then Bryce Four Wheaton, who's going into his fifth year of our program, is going to be a four-year starter. So I just felt like those guys had earned the opportunity. And, and to be honest, if I asked JT, he would say those guys needed to go in front of him as well. Fair enough. Neil, considering the transfer portal, NIL, conference realignment, which has a little bit less to do with you on a day-to-day -day basis, but how much more difficult is the job of serving as a head coach for a college football program than it was, say, five years ago? Well, you know, difficult, I don't know, because there's people that have got a lot more difficult jobs than, than we do as college football coaches, right? So I think everything in perspective, um, it's totally different. You know, there's not a day goes by that we're not dealing with something, dealing with name, image, likeness, or dealing with player retention. Those, and that's not – that wasn't the case, you know. And that's as short as three years ago, you know. So, like, um, the job has changed, and it's changed quickly. Um, and, and is it harder? Probably yes. It's harder. Do you think that there is a key to making that part of things a little bit easier in terms of the day-to-day, -to, -day, to, to put it bluntly, having to suck up to these 18- to 22-year-old kids to make sure that they don't enter the portal and go someplace completely different? Is there an obvious solution there for you to make sure that uh, kids aren't always thinking and grass is always greener terms and willing to stick around in a situation for two or three years? So the portal's here to stay. What we've got to do a really good job of is we've got to put some, some things in place from a time perspective, like we've got to give them windows. In football, it's most realistic to do a window right after the regular season and a window right after spring ball. And then you're able to manage your roster. It's good for them because they'll know – it's good for a student athlete because they'll know what their options are. Uh, they can take their visits, and then they have a window where they can enter, okay? Um, it's good for your staff and college coaches because you'll have an opportunity to build your roster and make plans, and you're not continually recruiting because you want it to be about your current team. And there's no way you can continually develop your current team if you're always worried about going and recruiting, right? And so that's that. Name, image, likeness piece of it is it's here to stay as well. We've got to figure out, and it's probably only going to come from the federal government, which is it's going to be a slow-moving uh, process, but we've got to figure out a way to put some guardrails. You know, name image likeness is the players have every opportunity to earn their earn money. We're in a capitalist country. We're not socialists. Everybody should have an opportunity to earn an income, right? But with that being said, it's not supposed to be as an inducement. So for it not to be an inducement, we're probably going to have to need the help of the federal government. Talking with West Virginia coach Neil Brown. One more from me, coach. Uh, as a college football fan, I'm so excited to see West Virginia and Pitt on a schedule mm -hmm. together. Is that something we're going to see moving forward, or is that just set as a couple years right now, and then we're going to have to have to see because things are changing so fast. So we just we we got this this agreement. I think it's for four years, and then we come back and we've got an agreement that toward the end of the decade that is going to be renewed. So. I think it's a rivalry that's great for college football. Very fortunate to kick it off on, a, on ESPN on a Thursday night. And our fan base is so fired up. You know, we're 50 days from the backyard brawl right now. And then, you know, but I think it's a game that it's important for us to where we're, we're a geographic outlier, which is not so strange in college athletics anymore. Yeah. But it's important for our fan base to have some regional rivalries, and that's that's the biggest one. Pardon me for not knowing. Have you coached in that game before? No, it's been 11 years. It's been 11 years wow. since Pitt. And, and West Virginia met on the, on the gridiron. God, that is awesome. All right, last one from me, Coach. How many more freaking stills do you guys have waiting That's in the it. wings? Uh, the, the third brother is, is going to be a freshman at uh, Fairmont High School. And uh, – but that's it. That's the, that's the last run of them. So, uh, but man, it's been really good. And and Dante, I think, is sitting on a big time year this fall. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're just it's incredible. The, the, the other fan base f bases I know respect the heck out of what they've been doing, but they are thinking about: Are they done yet? <laughs> is, is, is it done? So just one more, just one yeah. more still brother yeah. uh, coming through, and uh, I'm sure he will be considering West Virginia when the, when the time comes. Coach, we appreciate the time. I know you're busy. Enjoy media days. Best of luck this season. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. That is West Virginia head coach Neil Brown, and he just mentioned that. 50 days till 
the backyard brawl. They're going to pit for that one. So glad it's back on the schedule. Thursday night, September the 1st. They've got Kansas. They uh, they go right into conference there with a Kansas game on September 10th. They play Tallahassee.